that um, we can't make you whole. Well, I have to say that this bill, uh, thanks to Senator Lucy and all, and all, um, I can't pick out all the people who in one way or another um, have had input and concern uh, as far as what finally came out which is, I think, successful for mobile homeowners in their parks beyond our wildest dreams. And it does make us pretty near home. We didn't settle for less. And so with that, Senator Lucy. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. And I'm very pleased to be here with my colleagues. Uh, Senator Galbraith is uh, on a mission. You never know what he's up to. I think he's in either Korea, Turkey, or Norway, or all of the above, and uh, expressed his regrets at his inability to be here, as well as Valerie, who's uh, traveling. She's out of the country somewhere. Valerie's out of the country. And Sarah Edwards and, also, and, uh, the other Brattleboro representative, is away on a, a, a nuclear waste uh, visit in Knoxville, Tennessee. So how come everybody's out of the country and we're here in Dallas? <laughs> 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 but you need to introduce yourself, all right? Yeah. So anyway, they, they expressed their regrets of not being able to be here. But uh, when we came down on March 30, we uh, heard from a number of folks who had been adversely impacted by the tropical storm. And one of the messages that came through somewhat was we came to this hearing we presented testimony but we really don't expect anything's going to happen because these issues are really beyond anyone's control and a lot of folks that had a, a sort of an adverse reaction with FEMA. FEMA put out the banners come and apply get your number and then of course after wading through piles of paperwork there wasn't much relief for many people. Some, some got relief some didn't. So, following the March 30 hearing at your Tri-Park uh, office uh, and the hearing that we held at uh, Joe Familiari's? Familiari. I should know how to say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we actually got to work. Uh, we realized that uh, although we're a small state and compared to some of our bigger sister states don't have a lot of money, we decided we were going to make a difference. And so, we set on a mission to pass probably the most comprehensive mobile home bill ever passed in the history of the state. And although it contains a provision specific to triparts, there are other provisions in this legislation which will really change the way in which communities interact with mobile home parks and, of course, mobile home owners. Uh, as a comprehensive piece of legislation, it's going to prohibit decisions from being made, uh, land use decisions from being made uh, because the application tends to be a mobile home. You know, for years we've passed laws against discriminating against individuals, but we never passed a law that allowed municipalities to discriminate against mobile home parks because there are no individuals yet living in the park uh, when land use decisions are being made. So this bill makes clear that mobile home parks are to be reviewed and approved in the same manner as a McMansion uh, or any other commercial or residential building. So that was a plus. And, uh, so specifically to Tri Park, what we heard at the hearing on March 30 was that before Tropical Storm Irene, you folks had $250,000 in the bank. And after Tropical Storm Irene, 
uh, the balance was probably closer to zero. <coughs> and in addition to that, there was a great fear factor, and that was that the newly uh, installed water and sewer infrastructure, which had been damaged, uh, was going to require the start of payments uh, to the state uh, on a monthly basis, interest in principle, and one of the provisions that we've included in this bill will defer, not forgive, but defer uh, $496,000 in payments over the next two years. So that will give you a chance Yeah. I was going to say, the job of treasurer here today is pretty easy. When you balance the checkbook, it's zero. So, so uh, in any event, we, uh, so that will give you essentially $496,000 to rehabilitate the park. It's not money that you won't have to repay. It's simply money you'll have to repay at a later date, much which, which we do with student loans and other activities that we try to incense. So we wanted to make sure that the folks at Tri Park and other mobile home parks around the state that suffered a similar fate uh, will receive the same consideration. In addition to that, getting back to the overall bill, we appropriated $1.5 million in the form of appropriations and tax credits uh, to assist individuals with purchasing mobile homes and in developing mobile home parks. So that's a significant amount of money in a year when funding was relatively scarce because of the uh, uh, other demands on state revenues because of Tropical Storm Irene. So that will help overall, you know, we always say that a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, as we improve the quality of mobile home parks, maybe move them out of the floodplains where many of them find themselves, uh, perhaps they will uh, be viewed by others as they are by us as probably the most affordable form of housing that you can have in Vermont as well as elsewhere in the country. I know a lot of you folks are hardworking individuals. Some still work, some have retired, uh, and you've done your share in contributing to our state, and we felt this was simply a small measure of uh, extending a helping hand where you've probably extended a helping hand over many years uh, of living here in this state. Another provision uh, in the bill for those who have had condemned property. <clears throat> if your property was condemned, FEMA took the position that state law did not authorize any one person to declare a property condemned. That means a lot to FEMA because in the world of FEMA, if a person can issue a condemnation letter, they receive a check for $30,200. And that's a significant amount of money when you're trying to replace a mobile home. What we included in earlier versions of S-99 was a retroactive authorization for the governor and other municipal officials to declare a property condemned. And FEMA, which was monitoring the legislation, saw the handwriting on the wall and working with Sarah London, whose mother lives down here, she's now the governor's chief counsel. Uh, what's, what's Sarah's Liz mother? Liz Bankowski. Liz some of you may know Liz Bankowski. Uh, working with Liz uh, and our committee and our delegation, uh, FEMA finally threw the towel in and agreed that the governor, uh, in a disaster or emergency situation, does have the authority to issue condemnation letters. So for those of you who, have, who had their mobile home declared condemned, uh, FEMA, or perhaps working with the Vermont Workers Center, our, whose representative is here, will be able to receive $30,200 for that condemned property. So that's a big plus. Yeah. Um, we, uh, there, there's a lot in the bill. Um, the Department of um, Housing Economic Development and Community Affairs, Jennifer Haller is the Deputy Commissioner of that department, will undertake a comprehensive study of how we can use that $1.5 million to uh, essentially improve home ownership opportunities and improve with funding opportunities to help the parks as well as the, as well as the home owners. So on balance, uh, following the hearing on March 30, we did listen, 
and uh, we're back to tell you that for those who took the time to prepare uh, and appear at that hearing, we, we, we acted on it. And you're really the folks that deserve all the thanks because thanks to the ones who participated in our hearing on March 30, not only will the tri parks be in a better financial situation, but so will all other <coughs> mobile home parks and mobile home owners in the state today and really for the foreseeable future. So thank you very much for your efforts in bringing this information to our attention, which then enabled us to do our job. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. John Moran is the vice chair of my counterpart committee. My committee on the Senate side is known as the Senate Economic Development, Housing and General Affairs Committee. And in the House, John is the vice chair of, the, of, of our sister committee. And I think he should say a, a few words, uh, if you don't mind. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I'm vice chair of General Housing and Military Affairs. And on behalf of Helen Head, who is the chair from South Burlington, and Tom Stevens, who is a clerk uh, from Waterbury, both of them worked very hard on on S99, make it, it's probably the most significant piece of legislation we've passed this year. I'm here for a couple of reasons, besides representing the committee and I've been in the House and worked on this bill. Also, uh, I understand the pain of this Irene because almost every town in my district was severely damaged by Irene, including my own home, but uh, also in the district, uh, a lot of damage came from Irene. And secondly, that we are committed and will continue to be committed to do whatever we can do to make affordable housing a reality in the state of Vermont. And so I've been on that committee since I started in the House, and if I go back there, I hope to be on the housing committee again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Senator Jeanette Wright. And I, I just want to um, commend all of you for the, what you did here, because it, it was hard work. I've worked for Brattleboro Housing Authority. So was in Melrose Terrace during the flood and worked over there. So I didn't get around to the to the other parts of the county very much because I was so busy over there dealing with the 82 residents that had to be displaced there. But so I I understand the the trauma and the what what you went through and I'm just glad that. Vince took this on, and I think that um, Tim Ash also deserves. Tim was very helpful. Tim, Tim Ash is a senator from Burlington who's on Vince's committee and um, works with affordable housing in Burlington. He works for Cathedral Square, so he is very involved in affordable housing and took on a lot of the, the input for this. So I just want to thank you, and and um, we'll, this whole area is needs to be thought about. And now Rose Terrace is right there. That's what flooded where I work. And then Hayes Court is right there. And they're both owned by Brattleboro Housing Authority. And this whole area is, is in the flood plain. So we really need to look at it. Yeah, and I'd just like to say a few words. I'm Molly Burke, and I represent District 2 in Brattleboro. And actually, I live just downstream on the brook, fortunately high up, but just below me, there was quite a bit of damage in my district to individual homes, and particularly the businesses down in Flat Street. And uh, I, I just think, I know that uh, what I've learned as a state legislator is that it's citizen action that really makes things happen. And you all came together and made that happen. The other thing I want to say is that I work on public transit issues. I'm on the Transportation Committee. and on the Public Transit Advisory Committee for the state, so if you have any issues with public transit, uh, please contact me and I'll know how to reach the state. It's just uh, pedestrians getting run over. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly. I I was just at B-Trans yesterday and said, you know, we really need some money down here for safety education. So that's, yeah, definitely an issue. So thank you all for your work. When they want to cross the street in front of you. So I think yeah. that's, I think that's and it from our... I think that's it from our end. I don't know if anybody from the park would like to say anything. Uh, well, I, I'd like to say a little bit more and then turn it over. Um, you know, um, there are too many people here to thank, but Tom May, who testified, Tom. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Put us in action. Great yes. camel sign from the Vermont <laughs> Workers yes. Center. And I'm probably, now, Sylvia Renfrew. <laughs> All right. Now, Sylvia is going to get a new trailer. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dora. Dora. Sima did not come out. Just Sylvia has lived here within half a mile all her life. All her life. And the flood almost took it out. Yeah, her out of it was on the land they they bought the thing was and and without all these measures, um, it's doubtful whether she would be getting a new trailer. But she is going to be getting a new trailer. That's going to go. Oh. And she's not going to have to pay that two or three thousand dollars that isn't quite covered, or that ten or fifteen thousand dollars for people with modest incomes or fixed incomes that just made everything impossible because it's been taken care of. All right, now, Nancy Shirt. Uh, Barbara Sontag came up with the idea that the loan could be uh, perhaps waived, and since that wasn't possible, Nancy, our treasurer of the board, um, came up with the idea of the deferment. So, great idea. Nancy froze. Nancy and I are buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and we look at each other every morning and we go, what is today's list? <laughs> <laughs> and we looked at that first bill, the first draft, and we said, oh. <laughs> it worked, as I said, beyond our wildest dreams um, with accomplished legislation. And she is, Nancy is the representative um, from Glen Park to the board, and I will let her take it from here. Did I miss anybody that was... I thank everybody for coming here today to celebrate. This is awesome. But I would like to follow it up to say that this park um, has big plans to, of course, get green again. You will find fruit trees out here. You'll find raised beds for the lawn vegetables here and in the back as well. So we invite all of you to return a year from now when it's going to look different. I'm Carol Perry, and I'm part of the Workers' Center besides being the Vermont Workers' Center, besides being a resident of Glen Park. Um, I know it's going to seem like everything is back when Sylvia comes into her new home, but it's not true. We aren't there yet. We've done a lot. We've organized. That is a lot, just to get organized. Um, our park came together as neighbors. We were just a trailer park before, but now we're a mobile home park. We're homeowners, and we're together, and we're fighting this all as a group, all is one. And that's what's really, really important to me. I have neighbors I didn't know before that are wonderful people. And um, I just want to say that we still have work to do. I just don't want anybody to think that it's all done. It's a wonderful thing that we're getting. I mean, it is great, but we're not done. We still have a lot of work to do. We still need a lot more um, affordable housing. And I think what we have to do is to come up with, with a figure. What is affordable housing? And I think that that's one of the most important things that we do because to one person, affordable housing could be thousands. To us, it's, it's a, lot, a lot less. Our social security checks, are what we're living on, a lot of us. And we weren't there when they started out and said, oh, you're gonna need to save for retirement. We were in the era where we thought if we had worked and we got social security that we would be taken care of, that we didn't need this extra retirement fund. And um, I mean, I know I was, I could, I had a little in retirement fund, which I, my husband became disabled, and we used it. We had to use it to live. So um, we ended up with just Social Security. And I know how hard it is, how hard it is to buy fuel in the middle of the winter when you're freezing. I mean, I never turned my thermostat up all winter. <laughs> 
I did turn the electric blanket on a few times, but <laughs> I didn't, you know, uh, the fuel is, is what I think is our biggest problem right now, is paying that high price of fuel. Um, but I just wanted to tell you, I think we still have a lot of work to do, and I think that we are organized. We're, we're organized now so that we can get a lot of this work done. There's thousands of us that are working on this and, and you know, through the workers, Vermont Workers' Center and through other organizations, we're really pushing. That's all. Carol, <laughs> you were one of the lucky ones. You actually had flood insurance. Right. Well, I was one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. I did have flood insurance. But I, I, I think something I think something mm -hmm. needs to be done about the insurance, too, because there's only two trailers in this park that were new enough to have flood insurance. No one else could get it. it it's like, it's impossible. I mean, they could, no matter how much they wanted to pay for it, they couldn't get it. And, and that is a mistake. I mean, these people deserved it as much as anybody else. These mobile homes have <coughs> got to be individually priced. Um, and they need to be insured according to that. And I think we just really need help with this insurance program. Um, more people should be able to be insured. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted to say something. Uh, I'm Dora Bubalis and I'm on the Brattleboro Select Board. I, I want to, the first, uh, one person um, that helped over immensely over at Mountain Hope Park down the road was uh, Ariel Nelson. Um, and uh, with, with organizing volunteers uh, for cleanup over there. And I just want to recognize all of the volunteers that helped out at Melrose, helped here at Glen Park and down at Mountain Home uh, Trailer Park um, and with all of the Tri Park because um, without them it, it would have been um, it would have been a really long winter uh, for many of these folks. Um, so I, I, I wanted to, to, to recognize those people and I just want to thank Senator Luzzi, Representative John Moran, and our, our delegation from down here for working so hard um, on this legislation um, and, and making it so much easier for folks around here. Um, and this is just such a great community, this trailer park. They're, they're you know, folks, they, 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 come to, they came together uh, when, 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 when I was here volunteering um, over there, they, they, they great food. They had, <laughs> they made all kinds of things for all of the volunteers, um, and, um, and 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 it's it's kind of a place that a lot of people that live in town, um, they they uh, many of them don't even know it exists. Uh, they they haven't really been in um, to see the, you know it's it, it, and and um, I just wanna I just wanna say that this is a huge part of the community. And these folks are very energized, and they are involved in the community, and they follow what's going on in town. Um, and uh, it's they're they're a great asset to have to this community, and we really need to make sure that um, we can make sure that they financially they can all stay in in their homes. Thank you. Okay. I have one thing I like to add. Tom May, I've been to Montpelier five, six, seven, eight times on other issues. And my first time up there, I was very nervous. You would hear all kind of rumors throughout the country. And as I walked in, there was a lady called Lisa Sanchez. She gave me a hug and she says, welcome to your home in Montfield. <laughs> and I can tell you, I felt hurt at home every time I have gone up there. All the senators, all the representatives, just like Mr. Aluzzi and all the folks, Nancy Chard, right down the line, have always made me feel comfortable and have always listened to me, and that can only happen to me in the state of Vermont. One more recognition, United Way, very very helpful in organizing volunteers. <coughs> Didn't want to forget them. I have to I have to thank Dora for reminding me. All right, uh, one more big recognition, um, and this is for Len Park folks. All right. Celebration. Um, the Brattleboro Rotary stood by us. Uh, 
anything that they could do to help us, they were there week after week, month after month, with all kinds of assistance. And But I want to address uh, the Glenn Parkers, because this right here is an, in an invitation from the other group that stood by us, week after week, month after month, coming up from Winchester, Massachusetts, a Unitarian Universalist youth service group. All right, and they were wonderful. But they also thought we were wonderful. <laughs> and, you know, many of them are seniors and they're graduating. And on Sunday, this Sunday, they're having a, you know, a, a gathering, a graduation, so to speak. And they want all of us to come. And they serve lunch. And you know what kind of food they <laughs> They fed us before. Yeah. So I think that's it. Um, if we want, if any, I'd like to get a photo with the legislators and some of you. If any of you would like to be in it, maybe we can put it on Facebook or something to memorialize the event. <laughs> And uh, thank you all for coming today, and uh, good luck.